right, we should uh, get started on installing VirtualBox. And the reason I wanted to take this right from the from the get-go tonight is just if you've never done virtualization before, you know, this is this is something that's fairly familiar to viewers who have been watching for quite some time. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly, if you've been using Linux for quite some time, you know what virtualization technology is. You know what VirtualBox is from Sun. Uh, but for those of you who haven't really worked with virtualization, it's interesting to learn that you can take your Ubuntu machine, you can take your Windows machine, you can take your Mac machine, and you can install other operating systems into them and be able to boot them from within the operating system that you're currently running. So for example, I'm running Ubuntu on my system. I'll be able to install Windows 7 into that and be able to boot it up without ever turning off my Ubuntu system. So I can tinker around with it, I can install Windows applications. It's a great way to be able to access programs from Ubuntu or from Linux that you couldn't generally <clears throat> you couldn't generally run on Linux. So for example, somebody says, well, I really need Adobe Photoshop. So I, I need that because it's for work or something like that. So in that case, you can install a virtual machine of Windows. You can install Adobe Photoshop into that virtual machine and then pretty much you've got access to that within Ubuntu. So, uh, so what we're going to look at tonight is an application called VirtualBox. And it is available for a free download at virtualbox.org. Just take us back right to the, to the home page here. So what you can do, now you can read up on it here and stuff, and, and then over on the left-hand side, downloads. And you want to grab, uh, depending on your host, as I was saying, you can use it for Windows, you can use it for OS X and you can use it for Linux. I'm on Linux, and of course, there are others. I'm, I'm just kind of skipping through here, so I don't want to hear from a bunch of Solaris people and say, hey, you forgot to mention us. Mm -hmm. So there is Solaris, and there's other builds as well. Uh, so I'm going to jump into Linux, and I am running the Karmic Koala. So I want to grab the i386. What this means is, basically, i386 means you're running the 32-bit version of Linux, uh, AMD 64 means you're running the 64-bit version of Linux. So you need to make sure that you get the right version mm. and, uh, and just click to download that application. So, so what we're doing here by downloading this is we're actually grabbing the, um, the full version of VirtualBox. It's free of charge. It's provided by Sun. And when I say it's free of charge, it's free for personal use. It's not open source software in this form uh, because it contains proprietary code, such as uh, support for... SATA uh, virtual controllers, support for USB 2.0 uh, virtual controllers. Those are proprietary, so they're not able to open the code for this. But as long as you don't mind having some cl uh, closed source code, uh, then you should be fine doing this. If you prefer to use only open source, you can get the OSE, which is the Open Source Edition. So what we want to do is we can just open this with GW package installer. So what's going to happen is, is as soon as this 40 some odd megabyte file is finished downloading, it's going to uh, it's going to start installing on our system. It's going to give us the chance to install it very seamlessly. In a business environment, it's great for virtualizing servers to be able to have one physical server that could be say a dual processor, dual core Xeon, something super powerful with 32 gigabytes of RAM, and you create a whole bunch of virtual servers within that. So what happens is you increase cost of the physical server but substantially decrease cost of the subservers because you've only got one server you don't have you don't have to buy 50 servers to do the same job. You can have one server with 50 virtual servers installed kind of this kind of thing that might be pushing it but just for the example and it can do all the things that, uh, that the physical servers can do. So it gives us a chance to cut costs that way, but also in, in upgrading and things like that, you have virtual servers running within real hardware. So if you need more RAM in your virtual servers or virtual computers, you can just upgrade the RAM in the host, and then it gives more RAM to all of the uh, virtual machines as, as well. Uh, somebody asking in the chat room why I wouldn't uh, recommend the open source edition. I didn't catch who that was, uh, so I apologize. It was uh, Arend. Okay, Arend. The reason that I will use the non-open source edition is because I want to have access to the SATA controller and the USB 2.0 virtualization. You can use the open source edition, that's fine, but because we're using this for non-commercial purposes, we're able to use the full version. So in that we might as well because I'm not going to be looking at the source so I really don't I really don't care less I want the functionality more than I want the ability to look at the source and change things or to know that 
it's open source that I'm working with. And knowing that VirtualBox gives so much back to the community that it's not really, it's not making a difference for me to use either or, other than the functionality that I receive on my end. So, okay, so that file is uh, is downloaded and ready for us. This is the GW package installer, which we told it to open with. And it says, all dependencies are satisfied. So that means that anything that this application needs in order to install, I have it. It's good. Ubuntu is ready for it. So just hit install the package, enter your password, and we're good to go. So that's just going to go through a really easy installation procedure. And, uh, th and that's really, that gets us started. OK, so here we go. Little warning for you. Users of VirtualBox must be members of that group. Oh. Host network interfaces will be assigned to that group. So it is the group VBox users. Well, what does that mean? So what we need to do now in order for our user to be able to have access to using VirtualBox is we need to actually assign us to be a member of that group. So I'm going to go into my users and groups, which is under system administration. And we're going to see a new group there called, what is it, VBox users, as it says. So first of all, we need to unlock. So we're going to click this little key down here. It's going to ask me for my password. This is giving us administrator abilities uh, of this application. So now I want to go manage groups over at the right-hand side here. And you'll see this list of all the groups. So we go down to VBox users, which is conveniently not in alphabetical <laughs> order. So I'm going to hit VBox. OK, it may not be there yet, so let's not jump the gun. Uh, let's finish the installer. But we'll leave that open. So, oh, because it said creating, not created. Oh. That's what it is. Uh, should the module be compiled now? Typically, you would say just check that off and say, yep, that's fine to go. I'm going to close that because it's not ready for us just yet. We're going to come back to it. So when it asks if it's com if it's okay to compile the VirtualBox uh, kernel module, it's actually creating a, a virtual, uh, basically like a connector to your running Linux kernel. So um, without getting into detail about what that entails, when you update your kernel for your Ubuntu system, it's going to automatically uh, create a new uh, kernel virtualization module for VirtualBox. It's very seamless. It's very automated. You really don't, once it's installed, you just kind of let it run and it, and it does its thing. Um, I've seen my virtual machines go through the update process from 8.04 all the way, well, I think it was 8.10 all the way up to 9.10. Um, and my virtual machines just kept on running. I didn't have to change anything at that point. So, Oh, so this looks like it's done. Tells me that uh, VirtualBox has been installed. So I'm going to close that. Let's go back to our uh, user settings so that we can get this, uh, this user into the group. So again, system, administration, users and groups. Should be ready for us now. Unlock, enter our password. OK, we're back where we were. Manage groups, and let's go. Oh, look at that. Our group exists this time. So I'm going to double click on that, and now I can just check off my user. And that's going to give me access. And if you've got more than one user, you can tell the system which ones can use VirtualBox. So we're going to close out of that. We're good to go. And close all that. And now, if all is well, it's not there yet. So if this happens, sometimes, you know, of course, after a reboot, you're going to get that menu item instantly. Uh, but the first, you know, immediately following an installation, you may not have that. So the trick is to hit Alt F2, which is going to bring up your Run Application dialog, and then go Virtual Box. And see, it's case sensitive, capital V and a capital B. And then go Run. And there we are. We're going to get the license agreement, which I am, I'm a a speedy reader. So I'll just say I agree for the sake of our viewers. This is the uh, registration process, which you can cancel. But it's recommended that you do uh, actually register your, your uh, running version of VirtualBox. And we are now ready at this point. That finishes the obtaining and installation procedure of VirtualBox. And uh, we're ready to start installing our virtual machines.